Welcome to this week's episode of Chop the Rock. I'm Diana Long with the Little Rock River Market and the Convention and Visitors Bureau here with Shane Henderson, who's the executive chef of Benny Key. How are you today? Excellent. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much so for coming on the show. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No problem. So, Biddy Keith is a very big company here in Little Rock, and y'all do so much wonderful things in and around the community, including building a new facility and as a right. big employer. And so we're excited to learn more about your community involvement, but also to get some really good cooking tips and a great recipe for yeah, the let's pros. Hope so. Yeah, yeah uh, it's really important to us to give back to the community. It's, it's easy to just be a company and be in the community, but Luckily, we work for a great family-owned organization that believes in let's give back to where we're going to be involved in. And uh, I'm lucky enough to be the executive chef there and get to go and do a lot of great nonprofit events and work with a lot of great chefs around the state. That's excellent. It is great and wonderful feeling to see a company that really makes a place where it operates its home and right. tries yeah. to improve that mm -hmm. community, not just for its own benefit and that of its employees, but for the community right. at yeah. large. And that's exactly why I went, I went to work at, at Benny Keith was so I could be part of something bigger than, than just owning a restaurant. Right, right. That's super awesome. Yeah. So tell me, what are we going to cook today? So we're going to do an early fall wheat berry salad. Well, we've got some ingredients over here, but really the, the great thing about this salad is as long as you got wheat berries and some produce, anything can be thrown in there and it'll, it'll work out just fine. So I need to know first, because I'm not familiar with wheat berries at all, so can you tell us a little bit about what, what is that, where do you get so, it? Wheat berry is the whole grain of wheat, so if you've ever had whole grain or whole wheat bread, this is it all together. That's as before it gets milled out. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, we've got a little bit right here. A um, lot of it's grown in Arkansas. Right, lots of wheat farmers. Lots so of wheat is... farmers, so I mean, just a... Uh, so it this is what they like would... Rice. It does look like a kind of a brown rice in mm -hmm. a way. Yeah, it's a, a lot easier to cook than rice. Oh. Um, I mean, really all you've got to do is put some hot water with this and it'll soak it all up and it'll be done. We're going to get it a little soft, but I kind of want this to be the texture of risotto. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we want it to still have a little bit of a bite. Um, just because we're putting it with some produce, so if it's got a little bit of a bite to it, we'll have a nice texture. Right, right. In, in the end result, so. I'm uh, super excited. I've really never had anything with wheat berry, and right. I'm sure. So if you're at home and you, and you want to cook this dish, is wheat berry something that you can find generally in a a, like a big box grocery store? Yeah, anymore. Or is that a um, specialty food? You know, with most of the ancient grains getting popular again, mm -hmm. you can find this about anywhere, but if you can't find it, you can find some farro or some quinoa. Sell Go it ahead. out. It, it, yeah. It'll be just fine. Just don't call it an early fall wheat berry salad if you're going to put farro in it. You know? Gotcha. But gotcha. yeah, any of that, uh, I was thinking about doing some farro, but farro is not really something that grows in Arkansas, at least that I'm aware of, so I went with. Uh, some wheat berries. Uh, I tried it out with some rice, and that worked fine. But I thought the wheat berry texture was a little bit better. Gotcha, and, and something unique and, and different right. too. And right. so I always like on this show to highlight some of those things, and particularly things that are local mm -hmm. and um, you know you can find in Arkansas and that are Absolutely, grown here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's get started. Show okay. me how to do this. So we'll start off. But of course, I mean, if we're going to cook in Arkansas, we got to have some cast iron. You are right. So we'll put a couple of cups of our wheat berries just right in the right in the pan. That's how we, we measure around my house. Right, right. So at home, he said a couple of cups. So <laughs> use your use your yeah. uh, your measuring cup so if you're not an expert. Had, if we put two cups in there, we're going to end up we're going to put about seven cups of water okay. in there. We could do chicken stock, but. Water in this instance is going to be just fine. Chicken stock will give it a little more flavor. We're right. just going to dip some salted water. Gotcha. So we'll get about seven cups going in there. So seven cups of water. All right. So so while you're doing that, how much how much uh, wheat berry is this going to produce? So it's two cups of the dry grain. This would give us probably about four cups of. Okay. Uh, so it's not going to absorb nearly as much of the liquid as, say, like a rice would, because usually you do one cup rice, two cups water, and you right. end up with two cups of rice, right? Yeah. Um, 
Now this is going to plump a good little bit, and we're probably still going to have a little bit of water left in it. Which is, which fine. fine. Just Don't, drain that off. Just drain it off. Okay. Um, uh, but at at the end of it, if we've you can't mess this up. You can't put too much water in there because you can always strain it off. Gotcha. So don't 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 panic. Don't it's, panic if it's got a little right. bit of water left I, in the bottom. I like of the recipes pan once you're that no matter what happens, it still works out just fine. That's my favorite. This is, kind this of is one of those. <laughs> yes. So while that's coming up to a boil, we'll go ahead and start prepping up our our vegetables. So this is an English cucumber. Okay. This could have been any kind of cucumber. Any what, kind whatever of cucumber. Whatever you get at the. Uh, the farmer's market. We do have a variety of cucumbers at the farmer's market. And so I've always, I don't know about English cucumbers so much, but I always taste them to make sure there's not any bitter. Right. Occasionally you'll get a, a bitter cucumber that will just ruin a dish. Yeah. And you know, you kind of want to go with, you know, you, you go to the farmer's market and you see those big gigantic cucumbers, which well, generally those are going to be the ones that are a little more bitter. Gotcha. So go um, for something go for a little something bit smaller. smaller. Um, Not been in the field quite as long, right. maybe. And we've got, you know, some great farmers that grow some, like, lemon cucumbers that have a little bit of a citrus taste. That would be fantastic. I have seen those. In these. So we'll just... So these are pretty large chunks. Pretty large um, chunks. You want to go about bite size. Okay. Um, you know, something that all this should be able to fit in somebody's mouth. Okay. Pretty easily. And, Corn, we grow a ton of corn. We do grow yeah. a ton of corn here. Um, so this is some local corn, peaches and cream. We're gonna cook this very little. Ah, um, so it'll have a good so crunch So it'll still to have it a little bit of crunch to it. We're gonna put it in just a cast iron skillet with a little bit of oil uh, in on top of it. This, today's recipe is very unlike me. It's gonna be vegetarian. Digging that. I yeah. mean, you could always though, let's say that you wanted to have some meat with it. Could you just, saute up a little bit of uh, chicken or maybe chicken some work. I, I honestly I made this yesterday for my wife and uh, I said I'm thinking I'm gonna put some bacon in there and she was like why do you think you've got to put bacon in everything because it's bacon so, yeah it's bacon <laughs> and so she convinced me like eh, maybe we'll just leave a vegetarian today and maybe this will be the beginning of me turning over a new leaf so about how many ears of this fresh corn are you going to put I'm, in there? I think I'm going to go with two. Two, okay. Two ears of corn. And if you notice, I mean, I just cut it into that. You could cut it on a cutting board, but you're going to be chasing down uh, little cobs sure. of corn. Absolutely. And, and that, that is something that, you know, lots of times we say, here's how ways that you can get your kids' involvement in the kitchen. That is not the way to do that. <laughs> do not. There, sometimes the ears of corn can, can slip a little, especially when it's raw and right. it's a little bit harder. <laughs> Um, so this is something if you if you are trying to cook with your kids that you definitely want the parents to do. let the kids shuck the corn get the silks off that's a good activity they they can do over the trash can yeah I mean that's what I, I grew up being outside with my family shucking corn and that was every Fourth of and, July yeah. every Fourth right. of July we we put corn up when with I, was the, I, I remember we always had a cooler full of watermelon sitting over to the side that we could have once we got done yes and purple thumbs from the purple whole <laughs> peas it's great. And one of the ingredients we're going to put in this today is one of my favorite ingredients that I don't know why, but I could not stand as a kid, muscadines, Ooh. which are, I don't, they really remind me, I remember every muscadine season, my dad would go out and forage for muscadines and come back and we'd juice them and that would be basically our grape juice for breakfast in the mornings and I got to where I just couldn't stand them anymore. Right, now, you probably just I had just, too much. Yeah, now I love them. I can't wait until muscadine season. Oh, they're so great. So what we've got today is the very first that I could find. Fantastic, they make great jelly too, muscadines. Yeah, do. yeah. Uh, I keep it around our kitchen all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we do a lot with them. Okay, so tell me about these tomatoes. Is this So what we've got is some heirloom uh, cherry tomatoes. I did go ahead and cut these beforehand because I salted them. If you notice, there's a little bit of liquid down there. I wanted there to get is. some of that liquid off of there. Um, we'll go ahead and just soft them a little bit more. Okay. And then so the salting brings out the flavor. And brings out the flavor. Gets and, the juice know, out so your salad's not soggy. Yeah, and it, it pulls all the juice out and kind of intensifies. Salt's one of those great seasonings that intensifies flavors 
and if until you go over and when you something's over salted you know it but right up until that point you know it really intensifies right. all the flavors pulls so, out the water oh, yeah so always go a little bit easy on the salt because you can you add can more a whole add lot it. easier than you can take it off right getting salt out of something impossible yeah, a little bit hard <laughs> okay so we have the english cucumber we have two ears of corn fresh cut off the cob and then we've got a pint of cherry tomatoes Cut just in half, sliced in half. Salted. Mm -hmm. How long would you recommend these salted, sliced in half sit in at, before you start prepping the rest? One of the cool things about this is everything could be done the day before. Oh, okay. You probably just want to keep it all separate so it doesn't get soggy. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, the tomatoes, you definitely want to do those the day before, I think. You could cut the cucumbers the day before. You could cut the corn the day before. You could cook the wheat berries the day before. And then just like, let's say you're having a little party, you could just go right into the kitchen, saute all this up, and it'd be fantastic. I would, and what's the, if you wanted to do your cucumbers the day before, I've seen people store cucumbers in different ways. Is there a preferred method that chefs typically recommend? Is it in water, is it not, is it? I don't put them in water unless if they, you do get one that's a little bitter. Mm -hmm, if you put helps. in a little bit of salted water, it'll kind of help draw that bitterness out of them. The, uh, but just in a little container. Airtight. Uh, airtight. Put a lid on it. Uh, easily one day for those, one day for those, one day for those. Every, all this will be just fine. The only other thing that I've done ahead of time is this is just roasted garlic. Ooh, so this wow. is garlic that I've just put some oil on, 350 degrees, and just I, I let it go for about an hour and a half at 350. In the oven? And then I just turn the oven off. And let it sit. And just let it sit until I remembered, oh yeah. It smells good in here because there's garlic right. in the oven and pulled it out and you know so we've got some roasted garlic oil we're going to use that in the salad and a little bit in the dressing we're going to make we're going to make a green goddess dressing Ooh, to go that along sounds with it great so we'll start with that so we can get that done basically we're going to start off by just making a mayonnaise that's about all that a green goddess dressing is is a mayonnaise is a mayonnaise just a really fancy mayonnaise and if you if you think about it like that, I think it's a little easier to 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 actually pull off. Well, and I have never seen mayonnaise actually made, so this is oh, this is, well then this is going to be the biggest day of your life. We're going to ch culinarily challenge you today. We are. So a mayonnaise is egg yolks. Egg yolks. Not the not the whites. Not the whites. The whites are our enemy when it comes to this. Really, about all the white part is is uh, water and protein. Ah, okay. So the water is not our friend when it comes to this dish. All right. So we'll start with some egg yolks. We're gonna put just a little bit of vinegar into it. What I've got today is a white wine vinegar. Uh -huh. It could have been uh, apple cider vinegar and really any, any vinegar. It, whatever vinegar you kind of have on hand yeah, would it work. It does not really matter. So about how much vinegar is this? We're going to put about a tablespoon in here. Oh, a tablespoon. It does not take much. What does the vinegar do? It's an acid. It just kind of gives it a nice flavor. Um, and I think Duke's mayonnaise has gotten really popular, and we could have just started with Duke's mayonnaise and added what we're going to, you know, the herbs into it, and it would have worked just fine. So if you want a shortcut um, at yep. home, which is what I would likely do, <laughs> <laughs> or if you're short on time and you want to cut a step out, this is the easiest thing yeah. to do, and you can just sub that out. And so what is this here? This is just some Dijon mustard. Again, we're just adding a little bit of flavor to it. So really, at this point, we're, we're ready to basically start making mayonnaise. Start making mayonnaise. So this is a, a blended oil. This is 20% olive oil and 80% canola oil. Mm -hmm. Um, any oil would work. I don't, when I'm making dressings, I don't really like to just use a full on olive oil because I don't necessarily want the olive oil flavor. Right. I love olive oil on my bread, but not necessarily in a, in a dressing, especially with these ingredients. So those kitchen emulsifiers or those hand mixers really do make life so much oh, easier. Yeah. How much of the oil do you add? And that's a standard mason jar, right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, since we're doing this southern style, let's 
You just use a mason jar. Well, that's just the way to go. And those have come back in popularity now. Oh, yeah. They kind of make a resurgence every 10 years or so. So uh, now it's cool to use the mason jars again for more than just canning. So we're going to use about four times the amount of oil that we have uh, the eggs in there. Mm -hmm. And again, this is one of those things you can't hardly mess it up. Um, we're to a mayonnaise-y consistency, okay. so we'll go ahead and get started putting some of our other ingredients in there, and we can always add more oil or we can add more vinegar. Um, so we've got a little bit of the roasted garlic oil going in there. Now, one of the things that's a little bit different in my green goddess dressing, which is basically what we're going to make, and a lot of other people's, is I'm going to use a pickle I made. So a this pickle is, you made. Uh, yep. So this is just a uh, run-of-the-mill uh, kosher dill pickle that I made using some local uh, cucumbers. Mm -hmm. I've done this with just some store-bought pickled okra. You mm -hmm. could use any pickle you want. I just think it kind of gives it a little more bite, a little bit more interest. Yeah, I can see how that would be the case there. Because people oftentimes when they're making like a chicken salad or a tuna salad will add a, right. like a dill yeah. relish into that mix. It's a good complimentary flavor. Absolutely. And it's going to go really well with uh, a lot of the other flavors. And it's going to add a little bit more vinegar to the mix. We're going to put a little bit of uh, some shallots okay. in there. And if you don't have shallots at home it or... It could be red onion. Any kind of red it onion. Could okay. have been, uh, honestly, a lot of times if I don't have shallots... I just put some green onion in it and that kind of adds to the green. Um, oh, and probably makes it look a little greener. Yeah. I see that. And, uh, you know, I, I don't get hung up on recipes. Yeah, um, that's the fun part of cooking. Got, right, whatever you've got, throw it in there. Just experiment. I you, I'm not going to show up at your house if you don't do this recipe the same way I do it and chastise you. You do whatever the works Benny for Keith you. The Benny Keith police are not no, looking no, no, into our no, kitchen no, windows as we're cooking. We're, we're very busy. We don't have time for that. <laughs> well, and another thing, too, is like with baking, you have to follow such. It's like a, it's like a science as, as far as following the directions and making things rise. Yeah. But with cooking, you really do have the opportunity to... Um, you know, experiment and be flexible. Right. So tell me what herbs are these? So this is basil and parsley. Um, a lot of times I'll put some tarragon into it and we may add a little bit of some dried tarragon. Mm -hmm. um, but so just finally the nice chop thing those. about this is, too is you can get some fresh herbs of some sort pretty much year round. Yes, here in Arkansas. anymore, yes. Um, so again, don't get hung up. I, I've got basil and parsley because that's what was in my kitchen. Right, yeah, and um, you know, we, I get so excited when the farmer's market opens every spring because as you walk through that first morning of the market, it smells like all those herbs right. and the dill, yeah. I think, is one of the most um, significant smells that I associate with the farmer's market. But right. the truth yeah. is, the, the herbs, while they are some of the first things that are ready, that's something that you grow throughout the year right. that you can find or grow at home yeah. anytime. Absolutely. Uh, this is a little bit of arugula. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it in the salad as well, so why not just add a little bit to the dressing. See, what we should have done is taken that out. Right. And so, like at home, maybe use a... And we could have done this in a blender and just... There you go. And made it very easy. Or even one of those smoothie makers that has yep. a little jar and you mm -hmm. can just turn it on there. So just use whatever you have. Obviously, you're going to need some kind of a power mixer to be able to get all these things emulsified. Yeah, and if blended not, we've, down. we've been chopping forever to get it as fine as we're going to get it here. Right. And as I mentioned, we can always thicken it a little bit. So I, I tend to leave it a little thin at the beginning because I know I can always thicken it once I put all those herbs in there. It's going to get a little thinner, so we're going to add a little bit more. And the oil thickens it some? The oil will thicken it. That's gotcha. what's making it emulsified. Gotcha. So how long does our wheat berry need to cook as you're preparing the rest of this? If you bring it to a boil. Bring and then... it to a boil, put a lid on it, turn it off. In about 10 minutes, it'll be fine. Oh, okay. Um, what I tend to do is, like I said, 
I'd just turn it off, let it set there, and then we can chill it down, and the next day it'll be ready to go. Great, okay, this is so easy. So I, that's what we're shooting for. So we've got our muscadines to get ready with. Oh, look at those. I know I mean, that is like mini plum size. Oh, yeah. That's and gigantic. And I will admit so there was good. there was a lot more, but I ate a lot of them. <laughs> They're so I get excited to see these at the farmers market this time of year too. Yeah, and you know it always makes me realize like oh it's almost hunting season. Mm-hmm. So there's those nasty seeds in there we've got to deal with. Okay. So I just cut them in half. Mm-hmm. And if you want to cut a bunch in half at one time, this is how I did the tomatoes. Oh, but be super careful. So now we'll just take a little paring knife and go back and get our seeds out. Okay. Let's see, I might be able to help you get a few of those. Sort of fillet them out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The good thing about these two is the seeds are pretty easy to see in there. The rest of it's kind of like purple and they're brown. They really are, and if you cut them right down the middle, it's not like you're having to dig deep right. to get them. The only tricky part is sometimes they have one, sometimes they have two. This one had a big one and a small one. Now, I, I did check to see if we could get any persimmons yet, because mm -hmm. persimmons would have been something kind of fun to put in this as well. Um, a little early. Just a little bit early, but obviously if it was persimmon season, you know, usually you can get some persimmons and some muscadines at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. That would have been really good. Um, you know, we grow some great apples here in Arkansas. We do. Apples would have been fantastic to put in here, even if you wanted to omit the cucumbers in fall when we don't have any of those and put apples in instead. Oh, that's a great idea. Make this a little fruitier. Yeah. Give it that same crunch that you would have had with the, look how much, you're like five times faster. <laughs> it's not my first muscadine. <laughs> it's my first one to seed like this. <laughs> Here's get the seeds out of the way. So, and then I cheated. I've, you I've did got, auto magically. Got we've got an entire container full of these that's ready to go. So it will take you a little bit longer at home. So we've got about two cups of muscadines. Mm -hmm. uh, Just halved. You don't have to worry about peeling them. No, no. We're gonna leave them right like that, uh, washed and, and halved, and then with the seeds out. I'm probably going to kind of see what it looks like as I'm kind of putting it together as how many we want. I don't want it to be like muscadine salad. I want right. it to still be wheat berry salad. So we'll just kind of eyeball it and see where we want to go with that. Uh, the same with the tomatoes. I want really these two are here for sweetness, mm -hmm. but a lot they're there for color. Right. And since we've got these heirloom tomatoes and we've got a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, and then we've got a little bit of purple, we've got yellow, we got green. We've got some really great colors. And great fall colors yeah, too, yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. You know, so. we, we tend to think of fall and start thinking, oh, we've got to start using beets and Pumpkin turnips. Spice. And, uh, and this is something that, it still feels almost summery. It's in the fall. autumn. Yeah, and yeah. that's my favorite season of the year, um, mm -hmm. outside of that first tomatoes season. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when, when I get the first tomato, I'm like, that's it. I'm going to eat tomatoes every day this summer. Yeah, and then you, you and, eat so many, you end up sick yeah, of them and you're right. ready for fall. But those transition seasons like spring and autumn, I think everybody gets so excited about because yeah. that's when your palate really starts to change with what's available. I'm sure even if I eat this every day in the fall, by the end of the fall, I'll be like, oh, just so ready for a turnip. Right, right, right. <laughs> So we're gonna make a little bit of a crouton to go on top of this. Okay, what kind of roll are you starting out with? Does this it matter? is just a little brioche roll, Okay. but it really wouldn't matter. Um, we're, we're just using this because it's what I had. So we're just gonna slice these as thin as we can. 
And in this case, a bread knife is not necessary. You're actually getting a clean. Yeah, this cut. is a couple of day old bread too, so not um, fresh which is bread. ideal. Yeah. Now, if this was fresh bread, it would be crumbling all over the it place. Did. It would smush down, um, mm -hmm. and so it will hold up a little bit better as a crouton. Right. But this again is going to add texture. Anytime I'm cooking anything, you kind of want to keep texture in yes. mind. You want something to be smooth, something to be crunchy, something that gives it an interest on your palate. Um, without that, you know, food gets kind of boring. Right. Well, these are always good for, you know, sopping up that little extra bit of dressing maybe if yeah, you, and, uh, you didn't want to miss. This is one of those things, anytime I'm making croutons at the office, I have to make like twice as many as I think because people come by and start <laughs> snacking on them or, you know, and honestly, if you made too many of these, you could put them in a, in a Ziploc bag and they would hold for a couple of days. So oh, okay. if you're doing this one day and another maybe you're doing a, day. A, or having some people over for some cheese and wine, this would be great to put out on a platter with some cheese and some meats. Oh, that's a great um, idea. This would kind of taste similar to Melba toast ah, okay. when we get done. Just make sure they're all cut. That's that's so, important. <laughs> right, that, that way you don't get a big glob of it. So that's why you were kind of dealing them yeah, into dealing the bowl with, there. Yeah, I don't have a problem with gambling or anything. Right, no, 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 no. <laughs> so you have a little bit of that olive oil in a nonstick pan back mm -hmm. here, and you're just getting that a little bit. It's not 100% yep. on the heat just yet. We, just because we, we don't it want it to burn. Hot. hot, but not burning. And we can season these with whatever you like. I'm just going to put a little bit of some salt on there. Okay. And then I'm going to actually put a little bit of our roasted garlic oil in there. You wouldn't have mm. to. You could actually put some granulated garlic in there as well. If you didn't have the garlic oil right. at home. And now, since we've got this so hot, we don't even have to really worry about keeping it on the heat. Ah. So they're thin slices, which means they're going to cook for a whole lot faster. They're going to cook a lot faster. And I know it looks like uh, I've put a lot of oil in here, and I have, but we're not going to have any protein with this, so we can be a little unhealthy with some oil. Gotcha, sure. gotcha. And the canola olive oil blend is not the worst kind of, it's right. not bacon grease. <laughs> but bacon grease would be delicious. Wouldn't it though? <laughs> Maybe that's what you can do the next time you do a salad without the bacon bits is right. to do just, your, your uh, croutons. cook everything in, in bacon. Wow, and they brown up really quickly too. That's great. Yeah, you know, like I said, I took this off the heat. If I wouldn't have done that, I would have really had to have been on top of them uh, and act really quick to make sure that they didn't burn. Um, it's, this is kind of like adding too much salt to something. Right. It, so once it, they're yeah. burnt, it's, it's over. It's over. And so at home, for more inexperienced, well, I know that um, at home, like if I'm cooking something I've never cooked before or something that's got like a high heat that you've really got to watch mm -hmm. and you've got maybe some other things going, kind of my head gets in the way as far as I get a little bit nervous about that. Right. So take it off of the heat. You'd have to put it back on. Is that what you're about to do yep. to um, heat it back up and kind of go back mm -hmm. and forth? And more? honestly, at home, if you really wanted to, you could just throw this in the oven. Mm -hmm. You know, get your oven nice and hot and uh, and just cook it in there for maybe eight minutes or so. And would you need to flip them over if that's the case? Yeah, I, I tend to like uh, cook them for like six minutes and kind of stir them all mm -hmm. up. But be careful because you don't, we want them to be nice and big. We could right, have cut them in another place, but. Um, That's something you can really easily do while you're putting all the rest of this together. Right. Yeah. And like I said, I could have done these yesterday. This is just one of those things. All of this could have been done, gotcha. but it would have been for a pretty boring show. It would have been if just I would an have eating walked show. in and been like, "Okay, everything's cooked." Right. Right. We are getting about to the point where we're going to need this. Fantastic. We use one of your clear bowls so we can see what I'm doing. So, the first thing to do to get it started is I'm going to toast these wheat berries a little bit. Okay. So, we'll put another cast iron skillet on. And of course, I'm going to put less in here, less wheat berry in here than I would have to. Right. Um, and this just is because the wheat we're berry. making one. Right. This and is it all done so you can see the kind of the difference. Um, 
it's in clumped the water up a little you bit. I just I've just left it, it sitting in the water. Um, it's it's going to keep soaking up some of that liquid. But it won't get to like a mushy stage no, in that time frame. As, as long as you cool it down, like honestly, what I did I did this yesterday. I just threw a little bit of ice mm -hmm. in there with it, mm -hmm. put a lid on it, and threw it in the walked away. Walk, yeah. Very good. I, I like those recipes where you can just get to a point and be like, okay, I can walk away now. Especially, you know, people are so busy anymore with families and work and homework. You've got kids, or mm -hmm. just so many things that people have going on that this is another great reason to cook like this. So that pan is going to be for our corn. We're just going to kind of get a little bit of char on there. Okay. Bring out those natural sugars in it. Okay, enhance the flavor. So we'll just turn that down a little bit. Let it kind of hang out over there while our corn is cooking. Got your great homemade green goddess dressing there. Yes, and then we'll, what we'll do is just put a little bit of this down. And that can just hang out while we finish everything else. All right. Again, we could have, this could have been butter or more of our favorite bacon grease right. that we put in on this. You've got the fresh croutons right there. Those will only take just a second to cool off, yep. crisp up. Yeah, and don't panic. If you start to get them out and you're like, these are kind of soft. As they sit there, as I, like you They'll said, crisp they're going right to crisp up. So what, one thing I am going to do with this now that it's hot while it's still hot is I'm going to add a little bit of arugula to it. Okay. Oh, and let that wilt Just down Just so some. it wilts a little bit. I don't want to really cook it in with it, but just get a little bit wilty. So again, we'll just kind of let that hang out. So the nice thing about this dish too is that you do a lot of, just, just let that hang out. Yeah. Okay, just let that hang out. I kind of like that, yeah. Yeah. So our corn is starting to sound like popcorn, which is a good thing. We know it's getting about right, ready. Right, right. Oh, and it smells great too with the corn mm -hmm. cooking. Now this is one of those recipes too where you, you've got a lot of natural flavors. Mm -hmm. I mean, really the only season we've used is salt Just and roasted garlic. Just a little too, not much. And we're not overpowering it with like cayenne pepper or black pepper and, and it, we're letting everything kind of speak for itself which is really cool about when you're using natural produce and we can just kind of let everything say what it needs to say in the final dish well and it's also inexpensive to try this for the first time i know a lot of times you get a recipe and you have to buy six new ingredients that you've never had in your cabinet before and those spices good <laughs> spices are not right. they're, they're not cheap and right. so if you're if you can't find one that's like a little tiny one, then you're sitting on a spice that you may not use again mm. until it's expired. And so this is great to let those natural yeah, flavors I, come uh, out. You know, I help a lot of people open up restaurants. And one of the things I warn them about is, just so you know, your, your spice order is gonna be like the most expensive thing. No, spices aren't that bad. Well, that when you start necessary. adding it up, it, it gets pretty expensive. Especially that kind of quantity, but it even can be very expensive to get a good collection of spices going at home yep. for a new dish that you're gonna try. So that looks great. Oh, and it smells so good. Okay, so now we're coming to the point where we can start adding. You can see the, the arugula is a little bit wilted, but mm -hmm. not really wilted. It's got that um, pretty green color yeah. to it, that darkening I, of it. With this, I don't want it to get so wilted that it kind of gets slimy. Mm -hmm. I, I want it to still be like, oh, it's arugula. Right. But just so we can get a little bit more green stuff in there, mm -hmm. and just to kind of accent the green goddess, we'll put a little bit more parsley and basil. Mint would have been great in this as well. Okay. Um, I, I've worked with a lot of bakers and pastry people over the year, and they 
you know, get tired of everybody just puts mint. The only time they use it is, oh, just put it on that cheesecake and serve it. Right. So this kind of gives you a little something different. I'm going to leave this a lot bigger than we did earlier mm -hmm. so you can see it still in it. And see, now we can call it a salad. We got something green in there. Right, right. <laughs> so we'll add a, a little bit of our cucumber. Again, this is one of those things. Don't get hung up on how much, you know. If you really like cucumbers, put more lot. cucumbers in there. But for me, the, the, the thing I kept adding when I was doing this earlier was I kept putting more muscadines in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So hey, if you're like me and you love muscadines, put more muscadines in it. So we're making this fresh, and so it is going to be warm when we try it. But if you did this the day before, obviously you, will, you would want to keep all the ingredients separate. Yep. So you wouldn't want to do the wilting of right. the arugula Right, so you would much. do the, I would toast the uh, wheat berries right when I'm ready to serve it and toss it this together. And then you got all these cold ingredients that are going to cool that down gotcha. pretty quickly. okay. So, I mean, it, like when I started putting stuff in there, it was still steaming. We're getting a lot less steam off of it now. Right, right. And so that is so pretty and colorful. And it does have, with the wheat berry, that rich brown to it. It really yeah. does give it a fall look. Right. And, you know, with the, the wheat berries, too, you almost get this fruity flavor. Um, that, that nutty, woody, especially since we toasted them. Mm -hmm. and. It's just a different flavor than you can get with using like a rice or um, plaro or uh, just a quinoa eating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But again, any if you've got quinoa sitting around your house or mm -hmm. obviously since this is 100% wheat, if someone's gotten gluten intolerance, oh, yes. probably not the thing for them. But right, want to find something else yeah. to substitute out. That is just beautiful on that plate. You, know, you talked a little bit about advising people when they're opening up restaurants, but Vinnie Keith is involved in so many great causes in our community. We alluded to mm -hmm. that a little bit early on, uh, but y'all y'all work with Youth Home? Mm -hmm. Yep, we do a, a, a few things with them, but one of them we do with them is called uh, The Next Course. It's mm -hmm. an event that me and an, another chef in town started several years back um, that will be coming up soon. You also work with the Thea Foundation on their Blue Plate Special. Do a lot with the, with Thea, uh, great foundation. Uh, love everyone over there. They have a group that I knew absolutely nothing about when I came to work with mm -hmm. Benny Keith. And over the years, I've gotten to be such good friends and, with them, and they are fantastic people. That's great. The, the Leopolis family yes. is very, very nice, and they've done some great, great things down there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you've got also this big whole hog roast yep. that you yeah. guys yeah. pair well, up and we, do. Uh, we do that every year, the heritage hog roast. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if there is a chef and a pig, Benny Keith wants to be there. That's kind of our, our I don't know how we got that stigma, but we love being anywhere there's a chef and a pig around. I'm gonna tie that back to the love of bacon. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Probably a little bit. Yes, so this looks absolutely fantastic. And we're so fortunate to have you here with us today and Benny Keith and doing these great things and, and sourcing as much local product as you possibly can. Which yep, we've really been uh, working on that, trying to bring in as much local as we can, as, especially our customers driven, our, 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 what we're purchasing is driven by our customers. And that's what our customers are really asking us for, more local and more sustainable. And so that's kind of what we've been working towards is uh, how can we work with the farmers of produce and proteins to try to bring more of that in. I mean, obviously, there's no salt mine here in Arkansas, but right. if we can find some local beef and, and work with the grassroots co-op and, and work with the New South co-op and try to get more produce and mm -hmm. more interesting things in than just, uh, you know, calling up someone out in California and saying, can you deliver us a, a truck full of lettuce? Love to do that. Uh, Ozark All Seasons, now we do some lettuce with them that pretty much gives us a year-round access to lettuce. Right, and, and it's not in a truck shipping. Shipping from God knows where. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, you've got all the environmental costs associated with the mm -hmm. shipping and the fuel right. costs and the amount of time that it is out of the ground before right. it gets onto yeah, a plate. Yeah. Um, you know, that's good for our local economy, too, to absolutely. support those. And mm -hmm. speaking of sustainable, y'all have a new building. Yes, we're very excited. We'll, we'll be moving in very soon. It'll be... Uh, 
quite the undertaking. Quite We're, the undertaking. Yeah. I've heard people have taken tours, and you guys are going for a, a LEED certification. So, yep, I, I mean, I, that's I something gonna, to be proud of, too. Yeah, yeah, it'll be a very awesome facility, and I think we're going to be very open to having people come out and, and take a look at it. And uh, it, it, it'll be really neat, state of the art, and totally different than, than what I think anybody's seen here locally. That is a great. Well, I cannot wait to dig in and try this. I'm going to grab us a couple okay. of forks. I feel so healthy. <laughs> Dude, I want, I want part of this. Yeah, you got to get a musket on. I know, it's a little bit. Here we go. Oh my gosh. That is rich, crunchy, refreshing, but it tastes like fall at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that summer meets fall dish. That perfect autumn transition there. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, we'll share you. We'll share the recipe with you um, for this grape wheat berry fall salad. Um, so we look forward to more Chop the Rock episodes. Thank you so much, Thank Shane. You. We really Thanks appreciate you your time yeah, with no us problem. today. Mm. Mm. Good stuff. Thanks for tuning in. Watch us next time. Mm -hmm.